That's trippy shit. Dude, like this is this is literally what our universe does. Watch this. This is gonna blow your mind now, dude. <laughs> oh, that looks like neurons. A dude, really? <laughs> yeah. What? The no chip. Fuck you. <laughs> this is literally what our universe is built like, dude. And then the universe is inside of our brains, like the exact same thing, dude. It's it's literally it's almost scary, bro. So, do like <laughs> you're probably looking at that? Image I'm just right staring now. at it, like trying to like look at everything that's happening here, and my brain's having like this tiny little existential crisis. We are there live. we go hello our friends yeah welcome 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 it's really nice to be here for another week it's nice to have you Meltmore. it's always nice to have you as well dreamer j Thanks how's the so week much. treated you man your the week has been fantastic actually not gonna lie it has been a glorious week i i kind of got stuck up at some point with uh Got, I got a little bored because I kind of felt like I ran out of things to do and then I, I just realized I was being lazy and stopping myself from working rather than actually being bored and then it got a lot better as well. So I, I got a lot of varsity work done. We got a project done that's due on Monday early. So now I have actual Easter weekend to do what I want rather than having to slave for a project. And <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been doing some reading and... That's that's about it in your week. It's interesting that you're saying you've been reading as well. So this week we're on day, like we finished three days now. I've basically started a third stream per day where I'm just reading actually. And I, I've been reading this book called The Five Invitations by Frank Ostaseski, which is basically about this guy who was running a, a hospice for 25 years. And basically what a hospice is is where they take care of people uh, in their last days okay. and he he teaches the lessons that he learned from watching people pass away watching them forgive themselves watching them forgive others watching them not forgive others watching them die in writhing pain hectic 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 stories with so much weight and so much value in them and it's already had an influence a positive influence on my life and i look forward to actually continuing just being like doing actually uh, a reading stream and then continually just trying to read at least an hour every single day. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. What's it called again? The Five Invitations by Frank Ostaseski. The Five in Invitations. I'm just going to open up a tab so I don't forget it. In, uh, in the, uh, in the invitations. invitations. I don't know why I kept thinking invitations. My brain was just like the five invitations over and over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he basically invites you in five different ways. So if you if you look up in that Google search, the five invitations, and then I hope that if you just go to like a Google Images, it actually shows you the five invitations. Because they're very simple as well. Uh, they're hiding it. How dare you, Google Images, give me the good stuff. Yeah, oh, they are hiding it. Uh, Damn. But, so I'm, I'm just going to do five, five invitations, summary, and then it's going to have it like at the top of the summary. Donk, click on this thing. So the... I've been bamboozled again <laughs> Man, dude, like they're really like it's like it's like a golden nugget of information i don't want to open it on my phone i'm gonna have to do that <laughs> holy shit dude like it's no working on dude when you when you try and search okay, the alleyways it. nice when you try okay, and search but... the alleyways of google and all you end up is at a roadblock bro i was like at tab number five or something <laughs> going down the list <laughs> so don't wait this okay these are the five invitations okay don't wait welcome everything push away nothing bring your whole self to the experience 
find a place of rest in the middle of things and cultivate the don't know mind. The and don't he know basically mind? like you you set your mind free. It's not as like a it's like a spaciousness. Like Buddha called it emptiness, but like that emptiness means having like spacious mind to allowing yourself to not worry about things or the outcome of them because you don't know. Nice. nice so nice. like these are basically five invitations that he invites you to consider and to implement and to imp what's the word implement. i'm looking for implement thank you i was like saying implicate for some reason yep. in my head but i'm like that's definitely wrong <laughs> implement into your life and it's 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 some some good information i'm still on the like don't don't wait uh chapter so See, it's really interesting that you stuff. that you talk about. It. There's three things in there that kind of speaks about uh, experiences and making sure that you are fully aware of them. What are they again? It's the um, uh, don't wait. Yeah, bring your whole self to the experience and welcome everything. Don't yeah. push away anything. That those that welcome everything, bring your whole experience or your whole uh, body to the experience, is something that. I found recently that's been absolutely intriguing me is I remember there's a Mandragora song um, and in the Mandragora song, it it has the, the lines it says uh, it has this, I can't remember the rest, but it goes, um, let experience wash over you, absorb it like a sponge. And recently I've been doing like doing this thing where I basically, whenever I start doing something and after you've done some of your intention setting, become aware of your experience around you. And by that, I mean, it's like something I used to do is when I used to exercise, cause I, I exercise, like uh, I have said, I exercise every time before I shower. And it used to just be, I exercise, but suddenly what I've done now is, is I've slowed my pace down. I'll still do the same amount, but now I'll be very, uh, what's the word? Present. Present about it as well. It's like, it's this where I can feel every muscle that I exercise as I do a push up or as I do a sit up or whatever it is, is being consciously aware of each experience you have. When you get out of a shower, feel the cold rather than just Dude. eh on the cold. Actually put yourself present where you are rather than just living it. Uh, dude, it's like allowing of the experience. Like we're we're in our subconscious minds for a lot of our days, and bringing ourselves to the present, making ourselves like almost sometimes forcefully conscious, is is a part of it, dude. It's necessary. No, it definitely, definitely is, and it's, dude, it's so intriguing how everybody is is kind of moving in that direction. The world's the world has known it for a very long time, but only now people are actually becoming fully aware of how hard it is to stay one hundred percent fully present at all times. Yeah, dude, like it's 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 literally informationally taxing to do that. Yep. If you if you're constantly aware. Like it can be something that can be taxing on your nervous system as well, because I think there is definitely um, like a, a state of arousal that can happen with inside of your body and your mind if you're ultra aware like that. Because like one of the reasons we were ultra aware like that in nature during our evolution is basically because we needed to survive in some situations. Yeah, and I think like switching that mindset from a surviving mindset to a actually living mindset which if you really think about it is just words being shifted around it's like the the act of actually being present in your moment i think is definitely something that you can you can get good at when it comes to like meditation and stuff like that as well because like today i felt like i couldn't be as present as i was trying to be and then i opened my eyes and i looked down and i saw like a little seed on the ground and my mind really went through such depths looking at that seed that it really was uh, a profound moment even though i was just being present while looking at a seed yep it feels like it feels like we end up missing so much we had that conversation about um oh it was actually in the um that neural link thing you sent me where 
we get in our uh, our visual cortex uh, receives something stupid like 50 million neurons of information every second but it can only process 500 of it so in in all honesty whenever you're experiencing something visually i'm only speaking visually here because technically that's how by far i most use sense you are actually missing out on 99.9 percent of all the information you're cu that's coming into you dude that video i sent you about the the colors as well but Yo. Yo, dude. That, that would like really shifted my perspective on the things we actually actively see, dude. Because you're like you're really you're right, dude. We're literally we're seeing such a small spectrum of the entire spectrum that is available, and on top of that, we're not even seeing actual colors. We're just seeing different wavelengths of that spectrum, and our brain is interpreting it as colors, dude. That is like what. Dude, like what? What the the thing after I watched that video, I went, wait, space isn't black. It's such an easy and obvious concept, but the reason you see it as black is because there's nothing hitting the back of your eye. Your neuron, your the 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 I don't remember the exact uh the cells in your eye that do it are just not interpreting any type of photon, and so it's like, well, it's black. There's nothing. Yep, them cones, dude. Cones and rods. It's like, it's crazy, dude. And the fact that we have this, like, we have three of them, and those three are also basically the ones that we use to interpret the three most common colors in our, you know, environment, our yeah, immediate our environment. Earth. Yeah, our Earth, dude. Like, so if we had to evolve the eye on a planet that is mostly, like, what color? Let's Mars, say yellow. Red, there's, 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 yeah, or red, or like this. Like there's a lot of yellow stone everywhere. So now our brain evolves this yellow cone. So the star that we look at looks more yellow. The star, like, or the, I mean, our, our star. Like the sun is our star. Our star would look significantly more yellow. Our stars would also have like yellow shifts to them because we have more of these cones, and it would literally completely shift the way that we view the universe. Dude, it would. Sure. It would completely. And I, I still need to watch this video by. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Aperture. If anybody, if nobody's heard of it, go look at look him up. He makes fucking awesome videos. One of the new videos he made, uh, is titled uh, "What We Don't Know," and it's it starts out where it's like the very first question asked in the video is, is "How do you know that my blue and your Aperture, blues?" Dude. Aperture. Sorry, man. Aperture, like, like, like Glados. Is it spelt in a specific way? Because I search aperture and like the, the first video I get has like 650 views no, or something. No, 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 no. I'll find a few. Aperture. Uh, this guy. Uh, oh. We don't, oh, everything we don't know. I see it now, Everything dude. we don't know, dude. And the very first line in that video is, how do you know that my blue and your blue is the same? This is something I've thought about a lot, actually, because I honestly think it's a little bit of brainwashing in a way, because we basically grow up getting taught what these colors are supposed to be or what they're called. And there's technically no way for us to unlearn <laughs> that that brainwashing yeah. on it. It is. That's actually kind of true. It's the same thing with like with a triangle and shapes. You can never unlearn that a square has four sides. Never. It's now in your brain forever, which is quite intriguing that's it's a little scary that that's a possibility but still um and the it it gets me every time when we start talking about perception on the universe because every time you see something it's just the way your brain interpret it interprets it that's why you can have why people on psychedelics say they see things because it's not affecting the real world it's just uh, affecting your perception of it. And yeah, how, man, it blows my mind. It blows my mind every time trying to think about this galaxy and its importance and how everything fits together and how we view it comparatively to what actually is out there. And that's the other thing. Something I was very, I was thinking about is, you know how people are like, uh, you always, you sometimes get this like sixth sense that something's watching you or that there's something in the room 
And I don't mean that like I'm saying there's ghosts or something, but the Bruh, po- the I'm possibility I'm sure we are being watched one hundred percent. Dude, the possibility that there is a spectrum of something we don't know yet is so possible. I mean, dark matter exists, <laughs> and we have no idea what the fuck it is. None. Dude, dark matter and dark energy exists. Dude. So, when, when <laughs> like, there's two things that are, like, very big influences on our universe, and we don't know jack about it. Damn, um, dude. And it literally, it pushes on our universe as well. I don't know if you've seen that rendering... Uh, where they they basically put into a simulation the rules of our universe and the interpretation of dark matter, uh, dark matter uh, slash dark energy neural. So basically, they put into an algorithm all of the the variabilities to what dark matter is doing to our universe and how it's expanding it. And it basically gave it these images after rendering. So I'll, I'll be sending them through soon. Please send them through. Pictures. This and... Yo, dude, while you're, just while you're sending that, we need to have a conversation about those fucking brain cells in the dish. Dude, your... that are like grabbing for a connection. Yeah. That's trippy shit. Dude, like this is this is literally what our universe does. Watch this. This is gonna blow your mind now, dude. <laughs> oh, that looks like neurons. I do really. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, the no <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> this is literally what our universe is built like, dude. And then the universe is inside of our brains. Like the exact same thing, dude. It's it's literally it's almost scary, bro. So, do like you're probably looking at that. Image I'm just right staring now. at it, like trying to like look at everything that's happening here, and my brain's having like this tiny little existential crisis. <laughs> Welcome to life. Dude. So that that oh. unit of measurement that's parsec, uh, right? So nice. uh, let me do this. It's it's almost impossible to <laughs> to imagine that number, dude. Oh God, how go. big is that? So that is three point eight to the power 21 kilometers. So like your Yo. human brain cannot, cannot understand. That's a lot of zeros. zeros dude. That's, that's a lot the, of zeros. This, the thing that broke me the first time, just for somebody that doesn't understand numbers very well, num- a, a good way to emphasize a very quick like difference in scale of numbers and how exponentially big numbers get, um, if we were to take, um, a billion sheets of paper, we could stack those sheets of paper, uh, to, uh, also, I stand, you have a tiny echo. Still. Nah, no, no, now it's better. Um, I'm gonna do something quickly. Uh, I'm just gonna let you know, so it's not too bad in the video. Um, no, thank you for letting me know. But what was I talking about? You were talking about numbers, yes. stacking papers. So if you were to stack a billion papers, you could stack them from Earth to the moon and back. That would be a billion sheets of paper. If you take... Um, sorry, that would be... No, the, yeah, a billion. If you were to take a trillion uh, stacks of paper, you could stack it something stupid like 26 times to the moon and back before you'd run out of papers. It's still echoing, sorry, dude. This is still echoing. A tiny Because I think I can hear it as well because it sounds like a a low buzz, like a shh or something like that. Like a wee. I don't Uh, know, I I can't make that fucking turn of my mouth. Uh, I don't know what's up with it though. Maybe it's my input volume. How's this? Uh, Yeah, now it's gone. Now I'll just turn you up a little bit. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. 
I'm sorry for the random noises. I don't know what to say. No, it's gone now. But we are professionals. Don't worry. Yes. So this is how it sounds if it's just my mic alone. Um, yeah, that's fine. No, uh -uh, I can hear it. It's not the, the it's not picking it up, the software, uh, OBS, but I can hear it like slightly in the background. Because I can hear it as well, but I'm hearing it on your voice as well. That's the thing. It's like a, like a, like it sounds okay. Actually, now I have the, the sound in my head. It's like dwarves are like softly shaking their little like bell <laughs> uh, sticks. Something like this. It's like, <laughs> what is happening? That's what it sounds like to me, dude. I don't know. Maybe we're tripping. Dude, dude, I'm, I'm gonna just... <laughs> we looked at the universe and then we were just like, oh, well, guess we're brain smelted now. Yes. Yeah, we're, 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 ch we tuned into different frequencies. Yeah, like we're no longer on this plane of existence. Yo. Sorry, friends. Yeah. We'll see you again next time. <laughs> yeah, we see you again next time. We will be back with stories. <laughs> Uh, dude, our universe is profound, and now you, now that video, like that's why I was like so intrigued by that video you sent me about the neurons, like trying to find oh, connections. Oh, dude! Because this almost looked like that could be a screenshot from that video, dude. Dude, I, I don't know anymore, man. I I'm trying my best to learn as much as I can, and the more I learn the more confused I become. I recently watched a video on um, uh, electrodynamics, which is basically how the interaction between, you know that when you touch something, it's just your electrons despising mm -hmm. the thing you're touching's electrons and refusing to come into contact. And that's yeah, the like, like pushback. <laughs> yeah, that's like the pushback feeling you get. That's um, why you can't technically touch anything. Yeah, you've technically never touched anything in your life, but yeah, whatever. Um, but so the very interesting thing about that is, is that we have a model for it that is accurate to 0.000001%. But for it to work, we have to implement virtual particles between electrons. There is no way that we can get that model to work without implementing some type of particle that we can't detect. Now we assume that it's photons, um, but they're moving at, they're so tiny and the interaction is so minuscule that we might not be able to observe them, which I just think is bullshit how we can detect photons. It's, that's not bad. We can take photos of individual atoms. We, we, we can detect photons. So they're called virtual particles. These particles that interact between electrons to cause, uh, the, to cause a movement away from each other or closer to each other. And how is that possible? We have nothing in well, our universe that is virtual, yet our universe doesn't work without that. Dude, like, if you will, the thing about, like, photons as well... Like if, if, a, if a frequency is at exact right frequency, it can like knock electrons from atoms into different positions. And that's actually also the reason why the sun is dangerous to our cells, because there's some frequencies that the sun emits that literally knocks little electrons off of the chemicals that makes our DNA. And then it messes with us. Oh. So yeah bro that's it's like this our universe does that dude like it likes shifting electrons and it makes new things doing that as well but yeah sometimes like there's like i haven't actually heard about the virtual particles but like i can i 100 percent feel i understand where its place is supposed to be yeah now i they they assume in that thing that it is uh, photons or other sorts of particles. Even electrons can hit other electrons and split into more electrons, which is crazy to me. You can get two electrons which spontaneously split into one or merge into one electron. You can get two electron, uh, one electron spontaneously expo uh, uh, emerges into two electrons of the same size and everything. Also, did you know you can get a, a, an electron that moves backwards in time? It's... Uh, rotational energy is the opposite of what we see one moving forward in time. So technically it's, um, 
entropy is moving backwards. That is so trippy, dude. Dude, I'm just uh, what the fuck, dude? There are things that don't uh, that don't follow our perception of time. And something else I looked at the other day is: Did we have a conversation about uh, time relative or general relativity and how it works for time and how each and every one of us has technically a different time clock? Um, that's why if you move at the speed of light away from the Earth and come back, you'll have aged less than me. And the reason for yeah. it is that it has to do with what the direction and distance you take through time. And it's, it's incredible to me because it's, it's now made me realize that there are some things in this universe that act very counterintuitively to what we think. And so there was, a, there was this test done where they put two atomic clocks on two airplanes. Mm -hmm. And they had... Three, one, actually. Oh, they yeah. Had, uh, yeah, the, what, the control as well. Yeah, they had the control to make sure. But what ended up happening is, is they had one plane fly right way uh, anti-clockwise, so against the Earth's rotation, and one flying with the Earth's rotation. And what ended up happening is, is the one that flew with the Earth's rotation, because what they did is they had them meet up after a certain amount of time. And because the plane that went uh, with the Earth's rotation, uh, sorry, that went against the Earth's rotation, because it would fly multiple times around where the one going with the... No, sorry, the other way around. The one that went with the rotation flew a lot farther in the same amount of time. And because... It, if you look actually at uh, the way they represent it, it's really cool. Because the one was flying against the rotation of the Earth, it actually, in space, moved very little distance. Where the one that was flying with the Earth's rotation did it multiple times around and came to the same stop, and they were out by something like 0 0.0003 yeah. milliseconds. It was, a, it, was a small, it was a small amount, but it was measurable. But it was measurable. And now that's an insane thing to me, because did you know that satellites have to predict where we will be in the future? Satellites can't, can't for GPS, they can't use your current location because where they are at some 200,000, uh, yeah, not 200,000, something stupid like 200 to 1,000 kilometers outside orbiting, their time is different to our time because they're, they're, the amount of effect that gravity has on their time is different to ours so it has to do something minuscule amounts of adjustments but it actually has to predict where you will be in a set amount of time rather than where you are yeah dude watches you from twenty thousand kilometers away it's it's crazy dude and like fortunately they actually kind of limited how good that information is as well because it's actually really good at calculating that information but they were they were worried that people are going to use ordinary GPS systems to to launch uh, like missile strikes. Oh wow! Because it's so accurate. Yup. Fuck. That was a, quite a trip, dude. <laughs> Human beings, man. I'm sorry, I'm running a joint. Um, That's completely okay. I have decided. So I haven't decided on the exact uh, intention for this joint yet. It has it ha it came and then I wanted to write it down and then we started talking and it has disappeared. So we will we are we are currently thinking of a new intention for this joint before I light it. It's always good to to set intentions, dude. Like it's definitely something that has helped me a lot and in, in my expression as well, man. Yep. No, I. I have to admit, man, I feel like my life has gotten tremendously, I don't want to say better, mm. but it's gotten more comforting, more, no, comforting is the wrong word. It's gotten more, I've become more at peace with my life is the right way to say it. The more I, the more you study philosophy and the more time you spend thinking and actually doing the things that people that I've spent a lot of time thinking about it has done. And it, you kind of fall into this, I, I like the idea that the, the Buddhists and uh, Taoists have of you kind of fall into this flow of life where things end up happening around you that somehow just perfectly uh, align with what you need to happen. It doesn't, it's not what you want, it's what you need 
and where it needs to go. And that's that's also crazy to me, man. The amount of synchronicity that keeps happening in my life keeps blowing my mind away. Dude, like at what point is it no longer just a coincidence, you see? Like, yeah. It, sometimes people say like we're being naive, uh, we're reading into stuff, but like if it happens, like for me, the number 44, dude, I've probably seen the number 44 more than a hundred times this month. Like, how do you explain that, dude? Like, I'll, I'll be having a conversation with my family and then like looking at my phone to, to see if my, my video is done editing or something like that. And then it's like, oh, 44 on my phone, like, you know, the time and then 44. And I'm like, okay, nice. And then like nice. this honestly has happened so many times dude, that I feel it's just like this, this little bit of a, you go. That's how I see it. dude. I don't, I don't read too much into it. I'm just like, a, it's a, you go from life, like constantly just continue moving forward. And you have the support, dude, the infinite support of the source. Nice, dude. It is. It is astounding to me, man. I really have no words. I I also need to spend more time learning numbers, at least uh, magic or angelic numbers. I don't remember what. There are many many different names. Angel for numbers, yeah. yeah. Like, just it's it's just a like if anything, just a wake up call, dude. Like a call to awareness. It's like again mm -hmm. being present. I feel like that's actually something else that I have to admit that has been the biggest change in my life is realizing how many things correlate like that. The more, the more it becomes something that you understand, the more you can appreciate when things like that happen, like the number 44 reappearing or, uh, what, what was it? Something that I dude the other day, listen, listen to this. It was something that I, I got the biggest sense of deja vu and I can actually remember the dream I had about the thing that happened. Uh, we were sitting working on a project. Um, it was where it was Tuesday. And as I scrolled through the PDF, I heard the same words spoken to me. I saw the exact same thing happen on my screen. And I sat in awe for like three, for like three minutes, trying to just process what happened because I can actually remember having the dream and waking up. And then I see the exact thing that was in my dream. And I'm not talking about like a week ago. I had that dream at the beginning of lockdown. And three days ago, I saw the thing I had a dream about. And that is not something that has happened lightly in my life. I've had this happen multiple times in my life where I'll be like, I, s I remember seeing this. I know what's about to happen next. And then the thing happens and I'm like, what the fuck? How? And so, yeah, it is, it's astounding to me. To a whole new level of so. What? Dreamer, hey? The name Dreamer? I, I can, but you sound very weird. I might have switched to my phone quickly while we're doing the podcast. To quickly go get myself a schneck because... I'm hunger. <laughs> you hunger. I guess hunger. <laughs> I am hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I actually, I want to ask you the fuck. Okay, I want to ask you a quick question. Do you think it's important for us to get a global language? Come again. Say say again. Actually, do you think it is important? for us to get a global language, like a language so, that everybody can speak. I think English already is becoming that, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately. English is a fine language. Because I, I actually, I had this thought this, uh, this morning and I went and Googled it. So the most native speaking of any country is obviously Chinese, because that's obviously Chinese. Uh, and then it's uh, Spanish. Uh, so it's Chinese at 1.3 billion, Spanish at uh, 6.5 billion, uh, 650 million, and then uh, English at 630 million, something along those lines. But if you go and look at the amount of active speakers of the language, uh, 
there is actually more than 1.5 billion people that speak English. So I am. I was about to say, dude. Like we're talking about native speakers, 600,000, yeah. 600 million native speakers. And then actually, but that's incredible to me. So over 800 million people on this planet do not speak English as their native language, but know how to speak English. And I feel like it's such an important thing for us to get a language where everybody can communicate with everybody. Mm. I don't mean cultures need to disappear. That's just, I don't mean that you need to stop speaking your languages and throw all your old culture. I just think there needs to be one language that everybody on the planet can be like, you know what? I agree. English, Chinese, Japanese, whatever the fuck the language is. But there needs to be one language that we can all know if you go overseas, you can speak to those people. Even if they have their native language, they still and you can communicate. And I feel like that's a really important part that we need. You know what you think, I mean? Like the, the thing is, like I believe the reason English is going to become that is just because of the amount of content that English speaking people produce. So there's always going to be something for someone to learn from. And obviously, like there could be a Chinese group of friends starting a podcast together, having this exact same conversation, but they want the world to switch to Chinese. And it's, it's going to be a bias as well at the end of the day that we can't really escape. But I do think the, the reason English will reign supreme is because one, it is almost the most dominant language to program in. And yeah. two, it is going to be the most dominant language of the internet as well. And that is going to basically facilitate the expansion of the English language. Yeah. And I've also been recently thinking about how um, language has changed. It, it, you can actually, if you like go back and you look through history and you can see which countries developed which language, you can see how English used to be a, a kind of Gothic language. Like it was very minimalistic and then the English became powerful and they started taking over the world and it became this like crude, really crude language where you had to, everything had bigger meanings than that. And now as the era of memes have developed, we've gotten to the point, and this is something I genuinely think we've gotten a lot better at, is communication with more than just a word. Like if yeah. the word, the, a, a very big one for me, and it's such a stupid example, but the, like the, the yeet meme, it, it has gotten so big that that word has so many connotations to it now, or another one is lol. Lol, uh, it, it can mean 90 different things. And regardless of where you use it, everybody understands what you mean. Mm. I, I, I honestly believe that the way that we use memes as well is literally a new form of communication as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, it's, kind, of the, it's kind of the whole, we had the conversation about me and in my opinion, visual aid for conversation is very important. And memes have kind of given a really good way to do that. It shit posts as well in a very roundabout way. Um, but memes especially. Because I mean, it's you can, thing, dude. dude, you can probably go up to anybody that has spent a moderate amount of time on the internet and go like, do you, do you, do you know about the, the bongo cat meme? And they will know everything that there is pretty much to know about bongo cat and what's happened to it and the meme and know there's so many variations of it and i feel actually i really like your conversation your your idea of communication for memes and it's going to be like imagine future generations too that aren't culturally aware of the pop culture going on in that time like they won't be able to understand like if Imagine the Bernie meme, dude. That is something that really got blown up. Yeah. Imagine in, in 500 years, dude, that like what was very popular at the start of 2021. When they see this old guy, dude, sitting with his the legs crossed, mittens. looking cold, dude, looking just, <laughs> dude, looking cold. And they, they see like there's literally billions of results of people interacting with this meme, like likes given, comments given. Like, how do you process that information, dude? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> dude, you've actually caught me that. I, I, always, I always think that there would be a definite, like, study of memes happening.
but you've never i never thought of the cultural implications of it like what happens when you actually do look at it from the outside of what pop cul- pop culture is now like you just see an old man that's cold and it doesn't make sense the fuck happened also though i feel like it could be a really good history keeper because you could see how mm. times would have changed with how memes are structured dude i mean if you look at memes from like 20 2008 did the rage comic memes yo did the rage comic memes yes yo and what was big dude what was what was so big that we all were like referencing mm. i was too young yeah you were too young unfortunately yes yo like i was really into nine gags starting at grade eight yo. so like there were there was like rage comic haven what am i i'm trying uh, to think i got into nine nine gag originally when i was like also grade eight but that's th- th- three, years, three years later. Three years yeah. later. A lot of memes happen in three years. Yo, dude, a lot of memes happen in three years. Yo, ho, ho, ho. Think about that, dude. Yeah, see. No, it is. And some... Also, our sense of humor is so different from our parents' sense of humor. Oh, yeah. Dude, every time I see a Michael Jackson meme... Like the one that's like the hee hee one. I start yes, giggling. Yes, dude. Uh, the hug hee hee. Yeah, dude. I don't know why. But yes, it's dude. So that kills good. me. Yo. Wait, can I? I'm gonna. I'm so. I'm, this is devolving into like. I want to just show you my favorite meme of all time. Uh, 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 uh Bond. Uh, let me see James Bond meme, bro. It is my favorite thing to have ever graced the presence of meme culture. Where is it? Uh, uh, please, yes, dude. This this meme, this meme will forever make me laugh my absolute ass off. And just I, I don't know what's so funny about. I'll I'll send mine as well. Let me check this out. Upload. Um, <laughs> the name, <laughs> the Bond's name, James' name. Please do what. Font names jam. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> yeah, Bam's nuts. <laughs> Having a strong <laughs> call of a non It's God. such a stupid <laughs> fucking meme. But it, every time I see it, I start Dude, giggling. My favorite line is Bond's names to James. Font <laughs> <laughs> names to James. <laughs> Dude, this this freaking Michael Jackson meme as well, dude. Uh, dude also it got to a point where i would just laugh at the letter e whenever i saw the letter e in some meme it was just funny because i remember i remember that meme and every time i saw like an e or something and i just start giggling and it i i love actually how much how much information we are sharing with each other and how intertwined our lives have actually become through the stupid medium of memes and shit yeah. posts, dude. Shit posts, like to um those like absolutely dumbass stuff that they make about other series or that. That's no effort, but it's hilarious, and everybody can relate to it in some way or another because it's. I don't know if it's just a reference to pop pop culture or life in general. Everybody can kind of relate to it in some way. I think we're also pattern seeking machines, dude. So. Like we're we're almost pre predisposed. Just looked at the clock, forty four, dude. <laughs> For the first time, I was like, I wonder what the time is. Forty four. Nos. What is the yeah, what is the the, the angelic nature mm. of forty four? So now I want you to be completely honest. And tell me how much of this information you think is actually true. With so. magic, with angelic numbers and things like uh, the the flower of life and those things. No, like the, I'm I'm asking you like the thing I'm gonna read you now. Okay. Like it's gonna... Okay, I'll tell you honestly what, it, what, what afterwards. Mm, like. <sighs> some reason i'm not finding like there's usually like this one side like i try i try to keep it consistent at least yeah if i'm gonna go to a place 
Yeah, because each one's kind of different. But yeah, I, I think it's like interpretations of the same yeah. thing, but... It's like religion. It's pretty much like everything. Yeah, like, like they it, call it, uh, I think, n number, numerology. Yeah, I think that's called, what they call it's it. It's called numerology. It's, mm. um, and so, I mean, uh, that's why I, I always take it. I don't want to say it's here with a grain of salt because that's wrong. You take it with, you, you understand that it's an interpretation. It's the same as religion. It's the same as all uh, psychology, uh, uh, not philosophy. It's an interpretation of something that's not scientific. Yeah, because there's there's technically no basis of it in like science, like you said, basically, because it's it's definitely not something that you can just like like chuck it up. So, um, yeah, and I wonder. I will, I wonder, and this is something very intriguing: is with the nature of uh, quantum physics and its ability to be changed with the mere observation of it. I feel like certain things in the world actually would not be able to be studied scientifically because the act of studying it scientifically would ruin it. Yeah, literally as well. So let me, let me read to you what they say the meaning of this number is. Angel number 44 derives its meaning from an amplification of the vibrational essence of the number four. Whether a number is repeated, its vibration is amplified exponentially. Number four is the number associated with practicality, hard work, and laying a solid foundation for your future success. The number four is also associated with being down to earth. When it appears in an angel number, the number four only means that your guardian angels are literally very close to you at this time. The number 44 means also, uh, may also be thought of as an expression of the number eight. This is because the number 44 can be reduced to the root number eight. When you add the individual goes there, when you add the individual digits together, <laughs> number eight is the number of abundance, achievement, and material and professional success. When you see the number 44 in your experience, know that your angels are helping you achieve your aims and find the success you seek. Your guardian angels are very near, providing you with the strength and energy necessary to achieve your professional and spiritual aims. So now the, the spiritual meaning behind all of these numerical sequences are hidden powerful messages. Since the moment we come onto the planet, that it, duh, this seems like it's just telling you what it's going to tell you. Uh, we just have to open the eyes to our soul uh, every uh, second. Now you're seeing the number 44 everywhere, and you're probably asking yourself what the message is. So financial abundance, uh, let go of negativity, achievement and rewards. And yeah, so abundance releasing of negativity and achievements and awards. So that's basically the gist. So for me, I have, I, I am a scientific person by nature, but that doesn't mean that I do not understand that there are things that science cannot explain. And for me, I have, I have a big issue uh, with the fact still that we can't explain why thought happens. We can't explain why that first neuron fires to actually take up the initiative to do things. Now, one of the ways they tried to explain this with quantum phenomena, actually. I I know, but the the uh, the quantum phenomena where you can where you you're, that neuron fires because of something that happens in the external world. Exactly. Yeah. You're experiencing it and then changing yourself because of it. Yeah. In the now, same way that you change a state. Now the interesting thing for me is is even if it isn't as vast as quantum related. For you to have the optical sensation that you're currently having, let's say the only reason you can have thought is because you have observed some type of sense, because that's technically it. Uh, the, the way you, you do thoughts and everything is done off a thing that you can touch in one way, and then you have your imagination, which is you actively controlling your brain to see things in your brain. It's, it's weird to me. But still... That neither in, in either of those cases, in the external one, it's 100% guaranteed that what you are currently experiencing as thought is a representation of the external world because that has just influenced you to have that thought. Mm. And now the one... The That's what you your eyes during meditation. Yeah, exactly. Now, the thing is with that second one, the, we can't explain why, your neuro, why that first neuron uh, fires in your brain when you start doing things like imaginative thinking. And if that is based off quantum physics, 
or if it it almost has to be based off some external force if it just randomly fires so i am of the opinion that's almost i don't want to say a hundred percent because that removes the ability for free will no actually it doesn't so i'm going to change my my opinion now is i actually think a hundred percent of the thoughts you have are based off external decision or external influences but you have 100 percent control over your decisions on those thoughts and mm, i don't completely agree with that actually why i feel i feel everything is self-created so like the reason you're experiencing the thing that you're experiencing even though it's external it's still you doing it to yourself fair enough because you are technically choosing to to yeah see like you're keeping or... your eyes open looking at it keeping your eyes ears see and now uh, like all your senses open for that experience now the thing is if you are doing that now there's there's two arguments to be made because technically you are only seeing the number 44 more for two reasons one it is your by your i don't know what to call it your brain somehow quantum quantumly picking up on certain vibrations in the world causing you to look at it this at a direction because you're tuned for those frequencies or it is just your brain is tuned to those frequencies so you notice it more it's not happening more it's just you're noticing it more those are the two arguments you can make and in my opinion the fact that you see it more means that it has to have happened more because exactly. i i promise you that you did not the things that happen to you are exponential based of what you want to happen to you and if you want the number 44 to keep appearing that thing that is energy you're putting out into the universe and that energy somehow has to be continuously converted back into something you will experience at some point and so I actually, I do think there are enough things for uh, angelic numbers and those things to actually have a viable existence in our universe. I, I genuinely yeah, I do. do think that it is possible for our brains to pick up on things that don't happen. It's like, how is sixth sense possible? We have a sixth sense. A sixth sense. Anybody that doesn't think we have a sixth sense is wrong. Have you ever stood at a thing and gone like, that person's looking at me and then you turn around and they quickly look away. How the fuck did you do that? You didn't do that off visual or sensual or picking up molecules in there. You somehow knew that that person was looking at you. And that is mind blowing to me. That def that indicates that there is some way that your brain is picking up vibrational frequencies that we don't understand. So I completely agree with you that you that they are absolutely a thing that can actually influence your life and like what you said about it being like a quantum phenomenon actually especially resonated with me because let's say there are these angels right the way that they would communicate to you would be on that level actually so i basically have a quantum like leap of a thought as you said for me to look at my my phone right now and then i do that and i see this number so like it could be my internal brain keeping like track of that number and almost trying to amplify it because like it is something that I actually uh, purposefully do to myself as well. Interestingly enough, like I wake up in the mornings at 444. So every single morning when I wake up, the first thing that I see on my clock is the numbers 444. So I am actively doing it to myself as well as a mindset. And like, for, for instance, when I meditate, I set my timer to 33 minutes and 33 seconds. So three, 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 three. Yeah, exactly. And the, like, it's intentional. It's absolutely intentional. So what you said about uh, like the, the energy that you're tuning into almost, that is the energy that you're going to be attracting into your own life. And I completely agree with that. Dude. I, I feel like it's the, it's the whole law of attraction thing. But I feel the law of attraction is definitely a little bit uh, like it could be seen as naive because like the law of attraction basically just says if you have the perfect, uh, you know, mindset and positivity and abundance, then those things will naturally come to you. And even though to some extent, I do believe that to be true, I still believe you have to do the things in your life 
that ought to be done with that same intention. Yeah. Now, this is this is where I come and I'm going to say, I don't think it really matters whether that number is truly you tuning into another frequency or if it's just your brain realizing that those numbers are there. But the thing that matters more is your active intention of looking at it because that active intention you are paying to it and knowing what is happening what it or even if it's not actually is you telling yourself that that number is significant makes it significant whether it is actually significant is up for debate and we could probably spend the entire night debating it but the fact that it is significant to you is ha will have an actual impact on your life it is why intention setting is so big of a thing. If you are active and you continuously re, uh, reinforce this idea in your head that 444 or 333 or whatever it is will have actual significance on your life, it will because you want it to be. And that will be in whatever direction you've set that intention for those numbers to be. Yeah, but again, it just comes to your intention, dude. Like it's something we're already actively doing. It's just, it's an awareness practice, dude, I feel. It is absolutely an awareness practice, dude. And what, I, what I'm what i going to start doing now is, is I've been recently slacking a little bit on my meditation time. So I have decided that I'm going to do a nightly meditation before bed. Uh, but I want to do a kind of, uh, I, this is going to sound weird, but I wanna, I'm going to do a joint rolling ceremony uh, for myself with just the intention of what I want to happen throughout the night and the next day. And the reason I want to do that is because in my mind, structuring something through a medium is a really, really powerful way to get thoughts and habits to stick. Because if you can have something that takes up your entire presence to do, your entire presence will shift over into the mindset that you're used to while doing that thing. It's why people play music when they study or like a certain type of music when they study. Because if you hear that music again, your brain will automatically go to that part of your mind where that music resonated with your memories you wanted to study during that time. And so I feel like it's something really important that you have a ritual set up for meditation rather than just, oh, I'm going to sit on my bed and meditate now. I actually completely agree with that as well. Because we have this ability to set these intentions. And, like, it is, it is something that, as you said, it makes a big difference. Yep. And it's something that I've, I've been trying to do as well. Like, my, my meditations, I don't know if you have any crystals, but, like, hold on to a crystal the next time you meditate and tell me how you feel about that. Dude, I have some of the coolest crystals here. I have those... Uh, once we got at the cave, the uh, uh, citrine, my birthstone, which I'm going to put out. I have some rocks from Iceland, which are incredible to me. Um, the fact that there, I have rocks that are come from a place where it's volcanically active and it would never, ever, 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 ever in the existence of humanity have gotten here. Or actually the existence of the earth, if it was not for Christian bringing them for me from Iceland. So they have like this also super powerful idea in my mind. And this is something I'm gonna, I, I, I wanna start pushing a little bit for people to understand about rituals and uh, things. It's not that rituals may give actual, I, it might, I don't discredit me, I, 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 it might, I'm never saying anything I say, I don't mean with like a solid resolute, this is the way it's the, it might be, but in my mind, the act of taking something and giving it your significance and the significance you want to assign to it is one of the most important things in your life that you can do. I actually, like, I, I kind of spaced, I was in the kitchen, <laughs> my parents were making a lot of noise, I couldn't really say everything I wanted to say. I wanted to talk about your point on ritual as well mm -hmm. because i've been implementing a lot of rituals in my life as of late and like as you said i feel the intentional joint rolling with like writing uh, a like core value down or as you said something that you want to happen throughout your your resting sleep 
it's so powerful dude, because you're programming yourself i feel almost yeah you are and what i what i find incredible about that though that brain um thing that we that we, we have now learned where our brains will physically restructure itself for what you want and build more uh fat onto neurons so that they work quicker if you sit down and you do rituals about what you want to happen, your brain will physically restructure itself into what you want it to be. Yep. And it's an intention thing as well. Like your thought and the intention you have for that thought, like it's a, it's a very different type of mindset to think, I want my brain to be this way. I want my DNA to evolve this way. Yeah. And just going about life like, oh, okay, I'm just going to, you know, eat food, produce, and then die yeah. someday. Dude, there was this uh, really incredible uh, line. Where did I, where did I hear it? Um, now I've forgotten the line as well because I got a Discord message. I despise sometimes how quickly my brain can get turned around if it wasn't 100% on a thought like if your brain just takes that split second to think about something else and then it can't hold the other thought that's also why i i feel like our brains are incredibly powerful but they are really shit at certain things and we need to expand them what were we talking Dude, about basically what just what just happened is you were holding uh, a neuron firing pattern and the neuron firing pattern for your brain when you get a message is different to the neuron firing pattern that you had in that moment, in that idea. So you are also kind of programmed by these computers as well, and they're kind of facilitating our ADHD. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm gonna turn streamer mode back on. Apparently it wasn't on. Uh, streamer mode on. And uh, now I won't get notifications. So what were we talking about very quickly? Uh, you were gonna, gonna tell me something that you heard a line from something. Yes, you, I, I remember, uh, but what were we talking about before it? Mm, ritual programming your mind not being just a consumer oh producer. yes 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 it's also incredible to me as you like restart those neural patterns you had to restart them but it was basically this guy that was talking about how if you don't if you don't read you are basically the same as somebody that was never taught to read and i feel like in today's modern society it's a bit more advanced if you do not take the time to actually go and gather this information about our planet and about how you work, it is, you are hindering yourself, dude. Do you know how much of an advantage we have because we know how our brain works? Me and you can sit down and know for a fact that this ritual I'm doing right now before I go to bed is physically altering my brain for tomorrow so that I can think in the way I want to think. That is mm -hmm. such an advantage on people that don't understand that concept because it means that those people can never truly do the things they want because they're not actively aware about this potential they have. Yeah, dude. And I think the only thing we can really do is to make that information a little bit more accessible. And the only way we can really be expected to do that is by, by showing people, dude, by living it. I'm also going to interject that I, I am going to blame school as well. Mm. Dude, I feel like no, we've lost... Like, there's no blaming school, dude. Like, it's 100% school's fault in a lot of ways. Dude, we have lost the love for learning. I despised learning at school, dude. Because all I'd ever known about learning was you learn for a test and you either pass or you fail. I never grew up with something that interests me to the point where I was like, I should, I'm just going to learn these things. It wasn't until I got to varsity and was like, wait, there's this world out there that I finally actually started paying attention to science because it wasn't just tests. It wasn't just you have to study and you either look, you're good. Oh, you actually only know 50% of the work. And schools have lost this ability of giving you intrigue. Because you have this feeling of you always need to learn the information for studying rather than also, I'm also going to say, I feel like a lot of the teachers and I'm so sorry, teachers, I love you. You guys are doing the Lord's work, but I feel like a lot of teachers are only teachers because you're a teacher. 
rather than being a teacher for the sake of actually teaching people, actually teaching people to love learning and to understand why something like thermodynamics and convection is so cool. Pick up a hot glass, show your kids, look at this glass. Every, when you touch this, the atoms in this part of your hand are getting, are actually moving quicker. Excited. They're yeah. excited. They're moving quicker because the, the, they are being forced to touch the quicker atoms of the glass. And that's that quicker atoms are now making your hand warm. You'll never pick up a glass the same way again. And that's important. Yeah. You can do the same thing by rubbing your hands together. You're making the quick by yourself. <laughs> You're making the quick by yourself, dude. <laughs> this universe is amazing. It is so incredible. And I, I am excited for... Uh, not that I'm, I'm, I'm not waiting for it happen, but I'm excited to see what happens afterwards. This is such a incredible place that literally has everything ever. I don't know how to describe it. Like, try and fathom something new. That might just be our brain's feeble attempt to understand this, this, these multi-dimensional universes that we're currently living in. I don't know, man. It's dude. There's this. There's this theory that anything you can imagine, you've already experienced. Whoa. Mm hmm. <laughs> See, this is this is this is the part where my mind takes like a couple seconds to just sit and existentially die for a bit. And then come back and go, okay, great. I learned something new. Let's, let's figure that how to put that into my life. I think it's such a, a great thought that we can leave our friends with it. Yeah. Because we have been chatting for an hour and seven minutes. I feel the time went by so quick. Dude, the time did go by very quickly. I didn't even notice the time going by. That's yeah. I was like, usually I'm kind of like on it on eight because I want to go to sleep, but I was like spacing. They didn't look at the time again. Fuck yeah, dude. I see our, I feel like our podcasts have gotten a lot better and I hope all the friends that are listening are enjoying the conversation and let us know about any thoughts you've had in the convers uh, in the, the comments. And we actually have Rina. Rina has been commenting actually. Dude, did you see the, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to find your name cause I actually, I am very, very thankful for you being such an incredible person and writing paragraphs. Yeah, dude, that's uh, Rena. Uh, no, there's there. Uh, yeah, you... our name is something other than Rena. I know, but oh, it's Rena. Is it, dude? <laughs> dude, she. Yeah, her name is like Melmon. Yeah, Melman. Yeah, mm, dude. Yeah, but it's Rena. I I wanted to comment back on one of the uh one of the comments you saw you sent the one about doing um uh intention and I couldn't find the words that aptly described the way I want it or what I wanted to type back to you. So I am very sorry. Uh, I will, I will pro I will give you a response to it. I, my response to it is, is that there's nothing more, more important than intention setting and make sure that you always, always, always stay as present as you possibly can in life. Absolutely dude. And the more we do that, the more we get to do that. Yep. So thank you so much for the conversations, my friend. It's always nice having chats with you as well. Dude, same. I love you, my friend. I love you too. I'll see you, or I'll chat to you again soon, my friend. I'll chat to you soon. Bye. Yes. Goodbye.